And we will. There's a plug right there. Alright, we will then. Oh, okay. Let's put it on camera whenever he gets to the state. Hello everyone, welcome to B-Sides San Antonio 2019. Um, we'd like to thank a few sponsors, um, St. Mary's University, USAA, Trend Micro, Digital Defense, um, Texas Cyber Summit, San Antonio AFCEA chapter. Um, at the end of the day, stick around, there's gonna be prizes. Um, for our next speaker, uh, this is uh, Carlos Avila, and he'll be um, talking about radiography and security of PACS and Diacom systems. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. This is my first time at B Size and Texas, too. Um, Ecuador. Yes. Okay. This is my first time in Texas, too. I'm very excited, super excited to be here. And uh, thank you for being here. Um, it's my first presentation in English, uh, so be patient, please. I, I come from far away. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, after my talk comes uh, lunch. Okay. Uh, my name is Carlos Avila. I'm from Guayaquil, Ecuador. You might have heard about my country by places such as um, Amazon rainforest of the middle of the world or beautiful Galapagos Island. And I'm working at 11 Path. It's a cybersecurity unit at Telefonica. It's a company from Spain. Okay, this will be the agenda. Uh, I will, um, we will review a quick introduction about PAX um, to interaction with DICOM protocol. Um, I talk about uh, um, some key concepts and basic scheme on architecture. See? Um, the idea of the talk is not to see in details how the DICOM or PAX works, but to review in a general way how they work and above all, to focus on the vulnerabilities that I have discovered in different scenarios. And after that, I talk about for uh, topics for future research, um, some th uh, other ideas in mind that I or that me or you could develop after this talk. Finally, recommendations or or based or on my experience and conclusions. On the right side of the presentation, we see the first X-ray machine created by Mr. Royten, something like that, around 1895. And we also observe in the second image how this type of exam was in the, in the past, through multiple devices, several people, manual operations, and tasks. And to make it more complex, this scenario, all uh, radiological images store, we are stored in our rooms. And uh, they usually de de deteriorate or get burned and this way losing precious information. Today, the environment changed. Uh, you can see uh, integrate into instrumentation, automatic procedures, and store digital information in a PAX uh, servers in a most of cases. We began to see how this type of platform became vulnerable to attack vectors, such as ransomware attacks, IoT devices attacked, and data leakage from sensitive information from daily uh, to daily diseases from uh, like HIV, for example, it's very dangerous, like, um, to investigation of malware infection through DICOM files. For example, this uh, last research is very interesting, among others. So why uh, this research? 
Uh, like this person in that image, around four years I experienced this type of exam. And I, uh, where I had several X-ray uh, images taken to my monitor my health. At the moment, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, I asked myself about the functioning of the software behind these devices. For example, what type of protocols do they use? Or what uh, kind of, of software or program exists? And how are they developed? But um, before I start, let me explain to a little bit what is PAX, what is DICOM. Some key concepts. A PAX server is a system for digital storage, trans transmissions, and retrieval rheological images. Modalities is a type of exam, a type of medical imaging. For example, CT is a uh, computer tomography, or US is a uh, ultrasound, or MRI is a, mag mag I'm sorry, is a magnetic resonance imaging. I'm not a doctor, but I learned uh, researching. Um, DICOM message, it's a attribute for, for communication with a PAC server, with the other artifacts in healthcare facilities, and Web access to DICOM objects is a, a standard to expose images um, reports over web, uh, similar to libraries or uh, coding for create a web application for healthcare industry or PAX uh, uh, applications. Other stuff is electronic medica medical records, hospital information systems, and biological information systems. So, um, in the real life, the PAC server lo look like this. Uh, it's, a, it's a computer, it's a server, IT server with high storage and computing power. And DICOM is, uh, in the other hand, it's a, a standard or protocol for the communication with this type of devices, for transmit uh, images, uh, images and services, etc. All these true services, it's uh, executed through different commands. For example, uh, storage, query, print, modalities, etc. You can see that uh, in the in the other <coughs> slide. This slide show a traditional schemes how and how a PAC system work through DICOM uh, protocol and PACs. Basically, DICOM protocols allow diagnostic devices interact with the PAC servers with modalities. For example, CT scan, MRI, or others. These are the, the artifacts on, in the healthcare facility. These imaging modalities uh, to share information with the PAC server. And, and this, at the same time, will a PAC server will allow uh, to share information with other programs. For example, DICOM Viewer in the desktop or application mobile, mobile application, sorry, and PAX Workstation or other external uh, programs or uh, web services, for example. Um, also, DICOM protocol is very old. It is still operating in different companies' premises around the world. Um, for example, you can see um, sites or services on internet such as Shodan, Census, uh, Hunter.io, etc. Uh, and this, in this case, um, in the United States, a little over 530, only in Shodan. Um, how did it start this research? Another way I was able to collect information was through search engine techniques, like dorks. Um, so in the other cases, before WannaCry, you could, um, you could uh, find shared folders, a lot of shared folders directly connected to internet, sharing information, as you can see in, the, in that image on the left side. For example, PAX archive to share information by um, share folder. And the other example is here in the red line blankings, for example, 
other type of vendors. We can find a lot of applications that are available by the hospitals, clinics, healthcare industry in general. In fact, you can see in the, um, on, on internet today, uh, vendors offer to access client, possi client possible access to the mobile applications. For example, here. This represents another vector attack that I will speak about later. Let's continue. Um, this slide shows um, my first post um, where I explain in a simple way, uh, th uh, in a simple way, an attacker through uh, a, a tool Daikon client can get remote information from PAC servers without any authentication and authorization. Most of the times depends of configuration of the software. Um, you can see in that image uh, is the first evidence about that. But let me see a demo on that. As you can see in, in, in this video, I, and it's a Daikon tool called uh, Radiant Viewer. You download it, it's free, and you can configure IP address and port and default port of the DICOM services is uh, 104. In this case, it's a test on a server exposed to on internet is in Japan. Um, an attacker using DICOM tool could uh, extract this type of information on a server without any security. For example, a study date, patient name and date of birth, patient ID, modality, for example, type of exam, uh, student description, and other stuff. Uh, even the, the type of information, uh, even the type of tomo tomograph, tomograph, sorry, and the uh, other type of devices. And you can get all databases and appear data leaks on, on internet. Other evidence about that. In my research, uh, I have, uh, there are a lot of information uh, of, of them. These are other servers uh, exposing patient information. For example, in this case is a test on a server in Bolivia. You have 200 studies or records of patients. In this case is in Ecuador. You can see the names, for example, uh, the study day names, date of birth, type of study description, description etc. In this case, it's a uh, 5,500 uh, 5, study or records. This is in Brazil, for example, other, other server exposed on internet, and other example is in Japan. And do this type of, uh, of simple vulnerabilities in some countries, several companies have been indicted with millions, uh, the with millions of dollars in fines. So, however, my deep interest in this research led me to find a project, a project called Pax One Server. And uh, in this project, I found some vulnerabilities in the web application uh, level. As you can see in the web page, is the most commercially uh, available picture archive blah, 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 packs, and all features. And these vulnerabilities we reported to the project ex uh, sponsor. And the most important things about this project is the, um, the core of the, or the, of the web application has been used by other healthcare facilities on internet and commercial software. For example, you can see in the, in the web page all of um, the facilities can use PAX One server. You can see more details in the in that link. Here are some results. Oh, um, at the moment I tried to discover where these applications could be installed on internet. Here are some results on my research or, or looking in the internet. These are examples 
the packs one server installed on internet in different uh, healthcare facilities or companies uh, on around the world. This is one vulnerability uh, as well injection over uh, Pax one server that used to obtain um, obtain patients' data uh, from facilities in where uh, to have implemented that specific version of Pax server. This is the other evidence, but commercial software embed Pax one, Pax one um, with some customization uh, with the same vulnerabilities. And a potential attacker could be extract all patient information on these servers, depending of the configuration. This is the other vulnerability on the same software is the local file inclusion, typical web, uh, web attack. You have, uh, you can, or you could uh, have control of the server. And uh, here's some history, a story about my vulnerabilities. Most of the company quickly fixed the uh, flow phones, but it was funny in one of companies uh, sent me an offer, an offer, an offer to this software. And, but I said, I don't want to buy it. I want to fix it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure many of you, uh, of you experience this. Um, other type of vulnerabilities that I, that I found, um, I, you can see on the exploit DB. So access the commercial software in healthcare industry, it's difficult. I wanted to turn my research, uh, uh, around. I, so I try other attack vectors. For example, this time I, I wanted to test mobile applications with interact with PAX servers and DICOM protocols. So um, these are results. Uh, I analyzed 40 mobile applications uh, in iOS and Android. The principle, the principle, the main functional features is a radio, uh, manipulate ima images or radiological images medical results and patient's data. Uh, as you can see the result, it's not good, but you can, um, you can uh, such, um, the, where access the medical services such as um, radiological Im images, medical results, etc. Through these mobile applications, a potential attacker could find flaws um, that allow to escalate privilege on the infrastructure, on the healthcare in infrastructure, for example. As you can see, the results are not good. We have found common vulnerabilities, uh, for example, uh, obsolete certificated, uh, SQL injection, cross site scripting, hard coded password, etc. cetera. Uh, in this case, for this, um, for this test, I have used, uh, uh, our platform is uh, called MassApp, is uh, for uh, static and dynamic analysis and many manual tests, uh, tests uh, as well. You can see more details about this uh, research in that link. So some cases about that. For example, hard code data on mobile applications. In this case, I found um, hard coding sensitive data, for example, uh, passcode used to access to application, in this case in main, um, in manifest.xml, in Android application, you can see hard code, the passcode for access these um, applications. And for example, in this case, uh, the application saved the um, SQL light Without, uh, without library, without cipher library, for example. Other cases is insecure traffic. For example, um, these, uh, applica these uh, applications send information in the HTTP. Um, you can, you can see all, uh, XML and information with a uh, user passwords, uh, et cetera. You can modify this type of information. Other vector attack maybe is a uh, API um, on the server. Other weaknesses shouldn't even exist. 
for example, certificate hardcoded into the applications, excessive permission of the application, or, for example, it's optional HTTPS in these type of applications. You can see in that one, this one, in, in different applications, I see that. Um, other issues, for example, developers, nowadays developers continue to use Base64 as a method e encryption. And other things, it's uh, use the obsolete uh, f features or deprecate f uh, it's uh, as Westview, in, uh, which allowed cross-site scripting in a, web, in a mobile application. To mention other cases, for example, um, we found interaction in the mobile application with the REST uh, API or web services that if I found typical vulnerabilities in the web application, for example, SQL injection, cross -site scripting, uh, in this case, SQL injection, again, allows to access uh, the private information on the server. It's the commercial software in this case. Other vulnerabilities and vector attacks that uh, appear on my way. Here uh, we can see uh, vulnerabilities that I found, or discovered, and reported in different commercial software. Another kind of uh, application that interact with PAC servers is a uh, RIS, radiological information systems. In, in those cases, um, I found the cross-site scripting issues, but in the last images, in the last image, I found the SQL injection over demo app web application, web application in that vendor. You manipulate the different DICOM images, for example. As something to relate it to this type of applications, I analyze other type of applications. In this case, uh, applications uh, manage different um, content, for example, medical results. You can see the hard coding password again uh, through mobile applications and patient appointments and exam results. These are not developed in a secure way and show other vulnerabilities, if, for example, with uh, app mobiles without obfuscate your code in the critical applications and other stuff. For example, safe information on SQLite in plain text, for example, use pa users' passwords and type of uh, exams, results, etc. So the industry healthcare it, uh, has other issues. And I talk about the future research. I'm going to show you other interesting topics uh, for future research. In this case, is uh, protocols and hardware. Protocols or a standard, you can do more research in, on DICOM or other stuff, for example, HEL7, CCDA, FHIR, it's a new one, a new one, and, uh, which are XML structures that you can, uh, you could do other different tests is um, this uh, other stuff. For example, hardware, you can, uh, you, like more, oh, I'm sorry. We could uh, start with uh, other things. For example, it is a, this project is very interesting. It's a mini die compact server. You can uh, installing this um, pack server on a Raspberry Pi, for example. And there are many more applications to investigate. For example, uh, other software will interact with pack, with pack servers. In this case, is e, uh, EHR or EMR is electronic and medical records or hospital information systems or laboratory information manage, management systems. For example, uh, here are some uh, of, of that. I have discovered some flaws or vulnerabilities in that software. This software is a uh, LIMS, is lab basic laboratory information systems. This software save information, um, for example, for, for, formulas or secrets of the com of companies in this case. And this type of software 
uh, connect with, with other uh, machines or other artifacts in healthcare industry or healthcare facility. For example, in this case, you can see conf configure uh, 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 artifact to connect it via uh, RS232, uh, RS for example, or including packs. Other thing is uh, EMR, Electronic and Medical Records. This is a project, is open EMR. It's uh, very interesting. In, um, it's a uh, lot of use on internet, similar to Libre Health. Based on those vectors, I have other demo, uh, vulnerability that I found, that I found in EMR project. Libre Health is a uh, open source software it's a fork of, from Open EMR. LibreHealth used uh, for manage all information of healthcare facility or hospitals. For example, you can manage uh, patient's data, inventory of, of pharmacy, or different things, financial, etc. It's similar to um, software EP. Um, uh, okay, in this case. Uh, you can, uh, a user access to the portal patient, authenticate, um, for example, uh, access to, with a, a patient or like a patient. Um, in this case, an attacker or malicious user can send the post request or, or payload and read or write arbitrary access, arbitrary file on a server. For example, in this case, I, I sent the PHP info, for example, in this, uh, in that parameter is content. I, I try to, um, write on a server this file. In this case, it's a PHP info. Let me show you. Um, in this case, I use burp and send the, the request, um, okay, and, uh, and review, write a file on a server. This vulnerability and this uh, exploit, uh, you can see on the exploit DB. Um, other, other things, for example, in this case, um, you could load the a malicious a uh, user or attacker load uh, a web shell or a uh, nice message like that. Other things um, or conclusion or comments about my research. Um, the, the most of things or at the end, the scenarios of insecurity in this type of software so similar to the other industry. For example, insecure programming, uh, in this case, uh, in both cases, app mobiles and web applications, default or insecure configurations, uh, weak or, or default credentials, hard coding private data over mobile applications, protocols or obsolete products or hardening issues. For example, you can, nowadays you can implement Daikon over TLS or SSL, for example, um, or other things is unsupported or abandoned projects. The, the most of cases is forks on GitHub, for example. Uh, you can search a lot of vulnerabilities. Some recommendations. Uh, in, uh, for example, first one, uh, developers should be development in secure way or secure design. Um, Implement security control in all the stage of development software. Analyze your platforms um, or the industry healthcare compliance and regulation, which uh, are a lot of uh, documentation or best practice to implement it. Um, after that, audit your applications internally or out of, of the box and independence company. And other things, other techniques, you have uh, other techniques for techniques, for example, to share information with other uh, facilities in healthcare. You can use uh, data anonymization techniques or tools. 
uh, you have a lot of uh, scripts or tools in on internet hardening or secure connection DICOM, DICOM or HL7 over SSL or TLS TLS or uh, end users enable all security mechanisms offered by your platform for example uh, 2FA uh, login logout um, uh, bi biometric authentication depends of applications and uh, community uh, in the end, it's our medical, uh, our medical data. Uh, you can uh, contribute when we report a flaw or when implement a new feature over our program. This way, we we will help a lot. Uh, I have been a pleasure. I have a nice experience to be able to share for, uh, this talk with you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for all mistakes. OK, you have a question, so like that. So I'm curious. I work for the US government, where I work to do medical research. I was surprised to see that we were going to have a talk like this. What, what's your background? How did you get involved in this? Because I didn't know about any of this until I started doing this job with the US government. You you can uh, speak uh, slow, please. Oh, sorry. So I work for the U.S. government. We do medical research. We have a PAX system. What's your background? How did you get interested in this? Okay, I, I'm not a doctor. Um, I self-taught. I self-taught. Um, in uh, one day, the 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 story it's it's uh, it's really. Um, one day, I stay in the exam. I, I was stay in there and think how the functioning, what's uh, what's functioning this type of environment. Uh, I was hit by a car years ago. It's a long history, but I think about that. Um, I work in the typical pen testing and research, and I I don't know the technicals. Um, uh, technicals uh, in deep, something like that. N uh, mm, I don't know. It's okay. My response. Or? Yeah, that's good. I I'm not a doctor. I, I don't. I I I don't. Uh, I don't opportunity to go to the healthcare facilities. Or for example, I don't know um, the artifacts or. Or the it's difficult. For example, in my country, it's difficult uh, to obtain access to the to the machines. For example, in this case, or oh, my way for for this research, this research, it's the software. It's uh, in in this case, uh, open source software. Mm -hmm. oh, other question? Well. Thank you very much. <laughs>